warned not to buy school uniforms until a communique uh, comes through. Well, we are now joined by Charles Owoko Ochome, chair, national chairman of the Kenya Private School Association. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for joining us in this live broadcast. And by the way, we had actually on the poster I referred to you as the secretary, but uh, you have confirmed that, in fact, you scaled up and ran for elections and became... Uh, the chairman, I think, uh, one year ago. How has it been for you? Thank you, Tom. It has been kind yeah. of good. Yeah. Uh, it's nice working with mature people. The directors yeah. are mature people. Yeah. So it's, it's nice working with them. Yeah. Of course, even when they have challenges, you explain it, they get it. Yeah. And uh, where you score, they appreciate it. They appreciate it. Yeah, so it's nice working with the with yeah. the directors. By the way, that story, that story of, um, you know, the Ministry of Education rolling out the National Ed Inspection of Primary Schools to check the level of preparedness as chair of the Kenya uh, Private Schools Association. Uh, what would you say? How ready are the private schools? You know, uh, it's not bad for the government to check on schools. Uh, even when we're going to school, there were inspectors of schools. Mm. And I think at some level, there was a gap. So when people hear that the government is checking on schools, they just want to fault it or to think they, they are trying to find faults. I uh, have called across the country, or most of the directors, that met these government officials, and they said majority of them were very friendly. Uh, we had this same exercise last year before this current regime came into power, and they were also very vigorous. So. We are not scared that they are coming uh, because these are people we have worked with. Mm -hmm. They checked mo many of our schools, particularly the private schools, and mm -hmm. gave us registration certificates. Okay. So I think uh, authenticity of those certificates or whatever it is, yeah. uh, it may be it's necessary for the present administration. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about it is that the same same officers mm -hmm. who checked those schools are the same officers coming in. Uh, this time they have brought in the provincial administration or the interior ministry yeah. to check the schools with the with the, with the education officials. We have no problem with them mm -hmm. because they provide security. Remember some of our schools have uh, got nuisances from people who probably sell liquor around. And I think they are the people who are supposed to control such things. So we welcome them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, anything that improves education in the country mm -hmm. is good. I want to assure our members mm -hmm. across the country that they should receive them. And if there is any problems, mm -hmm. then let us know so that we can take it with the ministry and uh, discuss it with them because I want to assure them mm -hmm. that the CS, we are in talking terms mm -hmm. and uh, even the, the director of higher education, mm -hmm. we have been talking. So I don't think there is any sinister motive on that exercise. Okay. And you sound confident eh? uh, or, or about your level of preparedness. But tell me, eh, how does your association work with government to promote and... Uh, maintain high standards of education, especially within uh, the member schools of your association. What are the concrete things that you're doing in partnership with government to ensure that that quality that the current administration is striving for is, is maintained? Uh, let me highlight that uh, education is a very expensive exercise. Uh, when I was young, I think I read a book that uh, was talking about education being a noble thing. It's not something you get into because you want to be wealthy. You'll be cheating yourself. Because to offer education, there are so many sacrifices that goes with it. Take, for example, infrastructure to be able to offer uh, education in any institution is a heavy investment. The, to get the classrooms ready, to get the, 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 the labs, to get the playing fields, and many things, the content, and, and to pay, bring in the teachers to be able to make it a reality is not just a walk in the path. Mm -hmm. So I believe on this perspective, the government 
So it is important to bring in other players to also take off the burden from them so that they can also have some resources to be able to inject into other parts of the Kenyan economy. Mm -hmm. For example, if we spend all our money on education, where, what shall we spend on agriculture? Mm -hmm. What shall we put into places like uh, transport, our roads? They need this same money. Mm -hmm. So the government allow the private sector to come in to complement. Mm -hmm. We are not taking it, but we complement the efforts the government is putting in place mm -hmm. to be able to uh, provide this education okay. to Kenyans. Okay. And this is not a Kenyan affair alone. Mm -hmm. It is a worldwide practice. Mm -hmm. There's no developed country mm -hmm. that has no private education. Okay, you talk about uh, complementing government efforts. What recent initiatives you know um have you taken recently to support the government yeah i want to say that uh, we used to ask the government to capitate the students in the in the public schools and that have been in the school for over quite some time and we really wanted the government to capitate our students and we saw it was not coming and uh, the government was not refusing. I think the budget constraints. We have had very good CSS who were able to go work with us, but at some level we would get to uh, a headwind. We were not moving. Mm -hmm. So when I came in, I think uh, the first thing I said, why can't we look for other people who can also be able to provide funding for our schools? Because uh, putting up this infrastructure is uh, quite a huge expense. And I think uh, I'm happy to report that we were able to sign uh, an agreement with the National Bank to be able to provide funding to our members at an affordable rate through courtesy of other sponsors who are able to make that possible. And that is supposed to help our members, particularly to, to, to have clean energy, water and sanitation, and and also uh, improve content of our learning. So that is an achievement we we have we have done. How about how about uh, in terms of capacity building and ensuring that the teachers are CBC ready? We in the association are always on that. Uh, one of the things we do is to uh, build, train our teachers. And not only the teachers, even our directors, we have programs. Even now we have rolled them that will be going throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would ask me, where do you get trainers? Let me tell you for free that the Kenya Private Schools is endowed with so many brains. Some of the, the members of the Ashwin are former professors, lecturers, high school teachers, business people, church-based people with education in all these things. But Mm -hmm. We still also borrow a leave from the government to come and train our teachers. We offer those programs. I think the next thing possibly we, are, we want to discuss with the government is that they allow us to be certified when we bring quality trainers. Mm -hmm. That is a thing I, I think I can discuss when I want to take with the ministry so that we are not only training them and then they are not recognized as people have been trained. Mm -hmm. If you look at CBC or competency-based curriculum, mm -hmm. the private sector has run away with it and the, the, the students have done very well in my own assessment. Tell me, yeah? there's even a story there with my colleague uh, Ruth Wamboy, Rene, the one of the marking row, the KCP marking row in St. Francis in, 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 in Mangu. And uh, I listened, I, I listened very closely to what uh, Missouri Akello was saying, Kupet's Secretary General, you know, that uh, this is a tip of the iceberg. There were some complaints that were raised, uh, teachers going very early and so on and so on. I don't know what your thoughts are as the private sector schools cluster on uh, those and working environments is it is that something that you can you know give a, an opinion on a view on or? yeah you know uh, when it comes to high school teachers yeah. i think copet uh, gets first hand information okay i got wind of this in the morning actually mm -hmm. had gone to i wanted to have an appointment this year but when i went in uh, he had just rushed to to the same meeting mm -hmm. 
and uh, I wouldn't be able to discuss it so much because I no, don't have okay. the details. No, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. But tell me, eh, based even on the stories that we have been running lately, there are a lot of you know young people committing heinous acts and so on and so forth. I don't know what your thoughts are on having anchoring, domiciling a dedication. system that provides psychosocial support to children even as they're growing up so that we inculcate in the systems things like counseling you know how do we deal with failing an exam how do we deal with you know missing the targets you had set for yourself you know is this something that the private schools uh, are turning around in their minds you know, you know based on what we are witnessing happening in the country you know, with growth comes challenges, yeah. and uh, we have to appreciate and understand as a nation that our population has grown. By the time we are going to school, we are around eight, five million, there about. And now we are talking of a population that is running to 50 million. Now, looking back, you will appreciate that there are facilities that are constant, mm -hmm. and um, there are schools of course, the government has done well. We have quite a number of day schools. So we used to go to school very small numbers, and that was manageable. Now, if you look at that time and now, you will understand that uh, principals were trained, and I believe, to manage a certain number of students in a secondary school set up. Then the now we call them principals, we used to call them head teachers or headmasters. Mm -hmm. Then principals who are in colleges, I believe were also trained to manage a certain number of students mm -hmm. and as their level grows. And the universities, and of course, when you go to university, now we have schools mm -hmm. within a system. Yeah. But now tell me, if our schools then uh, like for me, when I went to school, we were 400, a whole school. Mm. Now in a school, we have 500 to 800 in one, from once, to say, for example. Yeah. And uh, facilities are stretched. Mm. Uh, obviously, overcrowding is there. Mm. And therefore, as a country, I think we have a tall order to be able to address those growth because they have brought the challenges which we must appreciate are there. Population has grown. Uh, opportunities for employment have become scarce. So a student possibly, and you know we are Kenyans, yeah. uh, possibly your father sold all the cows to take you to school. Yeah. You have finished school, you have no job. Mm. So if this person is not talked well, he doesn't see options. The cows are gone, possibly land was sold to take you to a university, mm. you have come back home, there, there is, we don't know where to start. So we see these things reflecting into our children. Yeah. We have systems in our high schools where we say we have chaplains as people to be able to talk to these children. But now in a, a situation where there are so many students, how many will the chaplain talk to, because possibly a school has only one. So th th these are things we need to look at. Where did the rain start beating us? Mm -hmm. Have we planned for the 50 million Kenyans mm -hmm. as opposed to the numbers we had possibly 20 million the other years? Mm -hmm. Now, if, if this population is going to continue growing, True. it's not going to, it's not static. Yeah. Our facilities must also grow with the population. Mm -hmm. If we don't think in that line, we'll always get into this problem, irrespective of whatever actions we do, whether we take them to prison, whatever we do, mm -hmm. we need to understand that growth brings challenges. That's true. And we must be able to confront these challenges to cope with the growth of the population. Okay, as we wind down, you talk about growth. How, how does the structure of KPSA look like, finally, just in uh, two seconds? KPSA uh, is structured right from the sub-counties. We have chairs. Mm. Then we have the counties. We have chairmen. Mm. Then we have regional representatives and sub-county representatives that, that talk and uh, discuss issues with our, 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 
our directors. Okay. Then we have what we call the National Executive Committee. Okay. That is now the management of the association. Okay. Then we have our parliament, which we call the National Chairman or the National Committee of Chairmen yeah. coming across the 47 counties of Kenya. Okay. Then uh, finally, at the end of the year, we have an AGM and, and we, where we take all the things we have done at the end of the year. And of course, you at the Apex as the chair of the Kenya Private Schools Association. I want to thank you yeah. for making time to come and talk to us. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to take a short break at this point. Do stay with us when we come back. The day's business plus later on, a look at the day's spots. Stay with us.